We have reached uh, part number four of the series of tutorials for putting together our solar system app for the quest. So this is part four. It's also the second part in stage two. And by the previous part, which was part three, we got to um, having all the planets uh, plus the moon, the Earth's moon, and for each one of them, there's a canvas. And for each canvas, there are two uh, TMPs, text mesh pros, one of them above the planet, one of them below. The one above has its name and the one below has some information about it. And this is the stage where we are right now, where for instance, for, I'm just gonna take any of the planets, let's say um, Mars. When we go to Mars, Mars has a canvas and it has a text above and a text below. Later on, we can make all kinds of adjustments as to like how far above the text, uh, uh, how far above the planet the text will be and how big the um, fonts are going to be, you know, below the text. But for right now, they are there. So the time has come to, let's do all of this, just collapse, um, to get to the next stage which as the guide says, it's time to do scripting. Now, what do we, why do we need scripting? Eventually there's gonna be three of them. So let's explain their purpose and then we will actually uh, write them. The first script we're gonna do is called the rotator script. And it's gonna take care of two things. Each planet or each uh, you know, body actually has two kinds of rotations. It rotates around something, like for instance, the Earth rotates around the Sun, and the Moon rotates around the Earth, but it also has its own self-rotation. For instance, for the Earth, the self-rotation is what gives us, you know, the 24-hour day. So for each planet, there's um, lines of script that are going to make it rotate around something. Mostly, you know, most of them are, are rotating around the Sun, and also its own self-rotation. A second script we're going to write is going to be called the Solar Manager, and that's going to be for the user interface so that when they fly amongst the planets, at first or initially, the text is not showing because it's going to look too busy. And only when we get close, uh, the user can um, pull or press the trigger of each or e either one of the controllers. And when they do, it will stop the planets from um, rotating so you know they don't fly away and we have to chase them and it will show the text so you press as we saw in the demo uh, when the user presses the trigger it'll show the text and the planets will like you know freeze for a second the third script again is for the benefit of the user as we can see in the text uh, for instance if you have the text of mars here's the canvas for mars let me get closer. If I'm at this angle, it's really easy to read. But what if I was flying at it from this angle? That makes it very hard to read. So the look at script, which is going to be the third one, is going to be attached to all the canvases to make sure that the text keeps rotating and pointing at the user, at the camera. So let's start. We're going to create a My Scripts folder in the assets. I already did. In my assets, here it is, a uh, My Scripts folder. Created it. Then you're going to create a new script and you're going to name it with the exact name Rotator Script. You know, the .cs is, you know, added by itself. You know, it's oh, I'm even going to take away the .cs so people don't think they need to type it. Uh, it's got to be the exact name because the uh, class, as we learned, of the script is rotator script with capital R and capital S. Um, it will start with some, you know, existing code, like an empty, you know, start and an empty update. And instead you're going to type all of this code. So um, if I was a student, I would right click somewhere in my scripts and create a new C sharp script and name it the right way. I already did that. I have the benefit of preparing things in advance. So I already have a rotator script and I already uh, opened it and uh, deleted its default code. And instead I typed the correct code. Uh, allow. And here it is. So at this point, if you're a student, 
you probably should be pausing this video and spending your time typing the code correctly uh, if you follow all my line numbers and start from line one by the time you're done if you you know have the same number of empty lines and so on it should get you more or less to close the last um, curly bracket at line 45 which of course is the end let's make it a comment end of class and that's the class that opened here the public class rotator script I'm going to save so right now what i'm assuming is that you paused the video that you typed the code and that now you're back to this video in order to uh, get an explanation of how this code works so before we do uh notice that it says after you you know type the code and everything of course the comments are just explanations so you know you don't have to type them if you don't want to they're not really functional part of the code um but once the script is complete we're going to attach it to all the planets other than the sun you know the sun's not a planet for saturn it's the saturn container and we're also going to attach it to the earth's moon so just as an example i'm going to take this script once it's written and you know i don't have any you know errors in it um i'm going to take that script rotator script and for instance attach it to mercury in this case, I'm attaching it to the planet itself, not to the canvas or any, you know, inner part. So when I select Mercury, let me collapse all of its other components. Here is the rotator script. And as you can see, it has already some public fields, which are the, the first things we're going to do. If you're trying to attach a script and it tells you that it's got errors, then you've got to fix the errors first. Um, but assuming we didn't write any errors, let's look at the script itself. The using the libraries we're bringing in are the most like you know default ones. We don't have to add anything. Um, the collections, the collection generic, and the Unity engine. Then the class, which of course its name needs to match the name of the script. Then there are one, two, three, four public fields. Remember, public fields means that they will show up in Unity in the inspector, so we can put whatever values we want into them. The first one is a game object is who to orbit. For instance, if it's Mercury, who are you orbit orbiting? The Sun. So, example, the Sun. That's going to be true for all the planets except the moon, which orbits the Earth. Uh, then, for each planet, there's going to be an orbit speed. Of course, it's going to be, you know, not the real one because, you know, the, for instance, the Earth takes a year to rotate around the sun. We're going to speed it up, but do it more or less in scale. So, how long to orbit around who you're going to orbit? Um, then there's the self-rotation speed, for instance, something that would mimic the, the Earth's, you know, 24-hour, you know, self-rotation. Then it's not enough to tell it who to orbit. It needs an actual vector 3. A vector 3 is a collection of an X, Y, and Z position of who to orbit position. So it's going to be like a two-step. Once I tell it, oh, you orbit the sun, we're going to tell it, oh, now find out where is the sun. And it's going to find the X, the Y, and the Z of the sun so it knows what to orbit around. So for each one of the planets, we're going to uh, populate at least some of those public fields. Some we're going to leave empty because I made them public just so we can see them. We're not actually going to type anything in them. But things that we are going to type or populate, for instance, for Mercury, who to orbit, I'm going to drag the sun. Mercury is going to uh, orbit the sun. And later on in the guide, there's a table that tells you for each planet what game object it is orbiting in what speed and in what self-rotation speed and all those numbers were scaled of course to be way faster than the real ones because we don't want to wait for years but they're more or less in the scale of you know showing which ones goes faster which ones go slower so for instance for mercury the orbit speed is three and the self-rotate speed is three so i'll type that the orbit speed is three and the self-rotate is three the who to orbit position i'm going to leave that blank because it can, it's going to take it from the sun the only reason i made it public is so i can see that it works back to the script um 
then just like any uh, default script it's going to have a start and right now I'm not using it so I just left the structure we could have just deleted those lines but I like to keep the structure in case I ever want something to happen at the start everything else is going to happen on update update remember is executed every frame the frame rate is 72 frames per second so this is going to be executed over and over and over 72 times per second the first thing it does is to check who to orbit position which is the uh, vector 3 the uh, the xyz that we're supposed to orbit equals the object for instance the sun dot transform that position and you might say like why do we need to update that 72 times per second we mostly needed to do it for the moon because the moon is orbiting earth but the earth keeps moving so it has basically think of the moon it's going to go oh who am i orbiting the earth where is the earth where is the earth now where is the earth now because the earth keeps moving because the earth is orbiting the sun so if I had to put a comment next to it is find out the x y z of who to orbit so it can keep following correctly the next thing is an if statement that's basically asking the following if OVR input, which uh, connects to the controllers. If a specific input called the raw button left index finger. Now, raw button means that it's binary, that it doesn't care how much you press the trigger. It just uh, uh, cares whether the trigger is fully released or fully pressed. So it's zero or one, true or false. So in this case, if it's pressed all the way up, or all the way down depending on how you look at it if the user is actually squeezing the trigger the left trigger or this is the um, the symbol for or or they're doing the same thing for the right trigger so the user can use either one of them or for testing purposes and we've done this before while we are still in unity uh, the the author you uh, is uh, holding clicking and holding the key B and the only reason I, 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 I pick the key B is because it's at the bottom center of the keyboard and it's easy to find so until we build it to the quest we're going to test it with the key B so in this case if I wrote a comment for that it would be if user presses either triggers or B before it's built what's going to happen two lines one that tells it to to rotate the other one that to rotate around something the other one that tells it to rotate around itself look at the rotation around it's a built-in function in uh in the unity you know uh, C sharp library one of the libraries we brought in and all we have to tell it is three things you're going to rotate around great first of all what coordinates the who to orbit position remember that's the xyz in this case let's say of the sun then if it's going to rotate around something is it going to rotate around the x-axis or the y or the z so there's like shorthand by saying vector three up that means the y think of like a pole that's pointing up and down remember y is up down um, and it's if we use the word up we mean clockwise if we use the word down it's still the y axis but it's counterclockwise so vector three up means the y clockwise and zero is the speed now why are we telling it to rotate at the speed zero because the whole, whole point is that if the user presses the triggers we want the planets to stop so this really tells it stop rotating because we need to basically set the speed to zero so yeah go ahead orbit around the sun orbit y around it you know like a revolving door but if the user is squeezing the trigger the speed will be zero so you're stopping pausing freezing you know whatever the next line 
is to rotate around itself. So, because remember, this script is attached, let's say, to Mercury. It's telling Mercury, hey, Mercury, I want you to rotate around yourself. What kind of rotation? Why rotation? Clockwise. So around your pole, basically. Now, in what speed? The self-rotate speed, if you remember, we wrote like three. Now, what is it? Is it three seconds? Is it three um, whatever? Um, is it three uh, degrees? It's actually a unit of time called time dot delta time. Now, what is time dot delta time? It's one divided by 72. If there are 72 frames per second, then each frame is a 70 second of a second. So this is the explanation at the end. Delta time is the completion time in seconds since the last frame. So 72 frames per second means it's one divided by 72, which is this number. This is delta time. Now we've seen this number before. We've seen this number before when we set up the whole project under edit project settings in the component called time. Here it is. That's the delta time. That's the fixed time steps. That's how much time will pass between each two frames. Now, if I made the delta time or I made the rotation speed 72, here's the example. If, for example, we rotate something at 72 times delta time, 72 times that small fraction will take you back to one and it'll take one second to rotate. But if we multiply it by a lot less, if we rotate it by only 7.2, which is a tenth of that, it's going to take it 10 times longer. So Mercury rotates around itself very, very, very slowly, which is why we multiply it by self-rotation speed, which is only 3 times delta time. It'll take it about 20 seconds. Think of the difference between 3 and 72. If the self-rotation speed was 72, it would take it exactly one second to rotate. You know we can experiment with that. If I go back here and I say, hey Mercury, your self-rotation speed is 72. And I got closer to Mercury and actually played I would have to like you know chase it but you see that mercury is rotating around itself pretty much at one time per second but if its self-rotation speed is only three it looks like it's barely rotating it's rotating around the sun but barely rotating around itself barely it's almost always showing one side to the sun um each planet has its own, you know, rotation speed. Let's complete this code. Um, all of this is when the user is squeezing the trigger. So the planets are going to stop or not move. Let's actually um, mimic that. If I press B while it's playing, see how it's not rotating around the sun, but it's still rotating around itself in that very, very slow speed of three times delta time going to take it like at least 20 seconds to complete the you know like a day when i release the b key it keeps rotating and that's exactly what the rest of the code is all about is what if i'm not pressing else is the opposite of if if the elf is else is checking if either the left trigger or the right trigger or b are pressed this says well neither one of them is pressed user is not pressing trigger normal in that case it will rotate around the sun with its orbit speed times delta time and it will rotate itself with its self-rotating speed times delta time each planet so uh, normal in other words rotate around uh, let's say the sun and yourself each one of them at its own speed signified by the variable self-rotation speed and orbit speed, which we feed separately into each planet. Orbit speed and self-rotation speed. They're all factors of this delta time, the time that it takes one frame, you know, the time between each two frames. And that's the end of this code because the rest of it is uh, comments and after that, the end of the um, update function. So let's comment that. 
and update and uh, end of class so right now because i attached the code only to mercury if i zoom out and i look at it from above and i play only mercury will rotate see how all, and the other planets are not because they don't have that script by the way at this point what i find helpful is also to turn on the gizmos this because that will show me also that there's a canvas on each one of them and it'll show me if the canvas is you know rotating correctly or not but i will stop the tutorial at this point use the time between now and the next tutorial to attach the script once you see that it works for let's say mercury to attach the script to all the bodies including the moon uh, with saturn it's going to be attached to the saturn container then play and test it uh, it should look something like this if i go to scenes i have a scene where um with rotator solar main with rotator when i play what you should you know get to all the planets are rotating each one of them in its own speed each one of them has a canvas again you get to see the uh, outlines of the canvas if your gizmos are on what i also like doing is changing the perspective to what's called anamorphic so it looks at it you know flat from above I will see you at the, at the next tutorial where we will write and implement the next script. Because like it says, for each planet, you know, you're going to attach a script and enter its values. You're going to test in Unity, just like you saw me do. And if it works, this is what we're going to do in the next tutorial.